animals are pigs. Calling in sick to work makes me feel uncomfortable. No matter how legitimate my excuse, I always get the feeling that my boss thinks I'm lying. On one recent occasion, I had a valid reason but lied anyway because the truth was just too darn humiliating. I simply mentioned that I had sustained a head injury and I hoped I would feel up to coming in the next day. By then, I reasoned I could think up of a doozy to explain the bandage on the top of my head. The accident occurred mainly because I had given in to my wife's wishes to adopt a cute little kitty cat. One morning, I was taking a shower after breakfast when I heard my wife, Deb, call out to me from the kitchen. Honey, the garbage disposal was dead again. Please come and reset it. And I yelled out, you know where the button is? <laughs> As I protested <laughs> through the shower, pitter patter and steam. Reset it yourself. But I'm scared, she persisted. What if it starts going and sucks me in? <laughs> there was a meaningful pause and then, come on, it'll only take you a second. So... Out I come, dripping wet, butt naked, hoping that my silent, outraged nudity would make a statement <laughs> about how I perceived her behaviour as extremely cowardly. Sighing out loud, I squatted down and stuck my head under the sink to find the button. It is the last action I remember for performing. <laughs> it struck without warning and without any respect due to my circumstances. No, it wasn't the hex disposal drawing me into its gnashing metal teeth. It was our new kitty who discovered the fascination of dangling objects she spied that were hanging between my legs. She had been poised around the corner and stalked me as I reached under the sink. And at the precise moment when I was most vulnerable, she leapt at the toys I unwittingly offered and snagged them with her needle-like claws. I lost all rational thought to control <laughs> orderly bodily movements, blindly rising at a violent rate of speed with the full weight of a kitten hanging from my masculine region. Wild animals are sometimes faced with a fight or flight syndrome. Men in this predicament choose the only option, which is flight. I know this from experience. I was fleeing straight up into the air when the sink and cabinet bluntly and forcefully impeded on my ascent. The impact knocked me out cold. <laughs> when I woke, my wife and the paramedics were standing over me. Now, there are not many things in this life worse than finding <laughs> oneself lying on the kitchen floor butt naked in front of a group of a been there, done that paramedic crew. <laughs> Even worse, having been briefed by my wife, the paramedics were all snorting loudly as they tried to conduct their work, all while trying to suppress their hysterical laughter and not succeeding. <laughs> Somehow I lived through it all, and a few days later I finally made it back to the office where colleagues tried to coax an explanation out of me about my head injury. I kept silent, claiming it was too painful to talk about, which it was. <laughs> What's the matter, they all asked. Cat got your tongue. <laughs> oh, if only they knew. Definitely had something else. <laughs> my then husband and I visited my father for the first time after we were married. Dad proceeds to tell stories from his army days. With great laughter ensuing, my father proceeds to tell a particularly funny story regarding how he would light his farts with a Zippo lighter. <laughs> It's an age-old classic. Fast forward, and my husband and I are back at home from our first long trip, and it's bedtime. I am all snugged up in the covers with the husband on the waterbed. <laughs> what is this, the 80s? Amazing. All of a sudden, he jumps up on the bed, bends over with his ass near my face, naked, and lights his fart. <laughs> Needless to say, his entire hairy backside lights up like a jet engine. <laughs> He is bent over, staggering to keep his balance on the waterbed whilst aggressively slapping at his bum hole while jumping around and screaming like a gorilla performing a mating ritual. His foot was caught in the crevice of the waterbed, causing him to lose his balance and tumble forward to the floor as his foot remained hoisted firmly between the waterbed frame and the waterbed mattress. The waft of burnt ass hair filled the room as my nostril hairs felt like they were singed from the heat. Being pregnant at the time and very sensitive to smells, I began to vomit furiously as I attempted to exit the bed in the direction of my injured husband while I was spewing on the bed, wall, floors, and on my husband. 
Anyway, make my way to the phone. I rang the ambulance against his wishes. The paramedics asked me how he injured his broken ankle. <laughs> and each time I tried to explain solemnly the imagery of him <laughs> on fire and his ankle <laughs> snapping played in my mind and I would break down into some sort of insane laughter like I should be at a mental asylum. <laughs> Not one of my prou- proudest moments as a wife. Well, ex-wife now. <laughs> <laughs> Writing was on the wall. Real early doors there. Hey, guys, have I got a beauty for you? <laughs> and he does. <laughs> this is Adam's reason why he doesn't wear ripped fashion jeans anymore. I was on a trip to Queensland and back to Melbourne with my dog, Max. And on the way back, Max starts doing laps around the front seat, which means he needs to do his business. So I pull over, whack on his lead, and head over to the nearest tree. While waiting for him to cack, he starts yelping. Next minute, I feel this immense pain on my bare big toe and realize I had a mammoth oh. ball ant attached to my toe. I quickly flung my foot, sending the ant and one thong off into the scrub. We both jumped back in the car and my toe throbbing, Max chewing his bunghole. <laughs> I started driving down the road cursing and cussing at that bloody bull ant, uh, but little did I know, another one of the little bastards had crawled up my jeans through the rip and grabbed me right on the end of my back. Oh! I screamed like a little girl and started punching my groin, <laughs> veering off the road and hitting a pile of dirt before coming to a stop. I jumped out of the car like Clark Kent, jumping out of the phone booth dressed as Superman, waving my arms around. I eventually dropped my dax and find the little bastard still attached to my Johnson. I passed oh. by, went to stop, but after seeing me with my pants down and whacking myself, <laughs> he accelerated like Peter Brock on Comrade Straight. <laughs> I finally get the invading miniature side cutter with a throbbing <laughs> toe and throbbing knob. I pulled my pants up and went to inspect the damage done to my car to find out the mound of dirt that I'd hit was a fire ant toe. There's going to be it, but wait, it gets worse. <laughs> Although the bite's not as fierce as the previously mentioned bull ant, I would argue this was more intense as I was covered in them from my knees down. <laughs> This is so good. <laughs> I pulled out my pocket knife and I turned my jeans into shorts and then used my jean legs to smack the ants off my legs. Finally, I got back into my car, Max looking at me like I'm the idiot, and then I drove off with him still chewing on his bunghole. Me throbbing with my big toe and my throbbing knob and my legs looking like I've shaved them with a blunt razor on fire. <laughs> and that was the day I swore never to wear ripped fashion jeans ever again. I laugh now, but it is with tears in my eyes. <laughs> One night, I had severe stomach pains, and at about 4 a.m., my wife suggested I take Buscapan. Being a white male in my 50s, I was convinced it was no more serious <laughs> and terminal, and asked her to drive me to a private hospital. No queuing for a fee. Anyway, after said fee, they popped me in a cubicle, and after a while, a nurse came in with a little jar and requested a sample. I went to the toilet. As it was a stomach complaint, I gave her a sample in a jar, which, by the way, was harder to do than a hole-in-one on a par five <laughs> because they give you a thimble to aim for. <laughs> anyway, the nurse knocked on the door, and to her surprise, I presented a jar chocker with chocker. <laughs> Since the immediate area smelled like a month-old roadkill, uh, they immediately quarantined the toilet due to health risks. <laughs> As the morning continued, I was given another dose of Buscapan and exclusive access to my own taped-off bathroom, which I proceeded to use to relax the biggest fart of my life out of my body. I am talking biblical. <laughs> like, I am genuinely surprised that Greta Thunberg didn't call me and give me a rant about global warming. <laughs> oh, jeez. Anyway, the body felt instantly better. Problem solved, and I ordered a taxi and went home. <laughs> By the time you add up the specialists, nurses, doctors, the hazmat crew for the cleanup, fair to say it's probably the most expensive fart of my life anyway. Who goes to the hospital for a fart, he signs off with. I knew that it was. Who goes to the hospital for a fart?